Visit sailright.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Today we're going to take this bar stool that you can pick up from any department store, it's really cheap, and we're going to put a cushion on top. We'll be using a two inch foam, which does require a boxing or banding to be sewn to the round top. When you pull fabric around a round bar stool, usually you get all kinds of wrinkles underneath the uh, application as you staple it on, and those have to be pulled around to the back side. But in this tutorial video, we're going to show you a way to eliminate all of those wrinkles so you can simply staple it in place without having to pull tons of wrinkles to the back side. Let's get started. Cutting the foam to size is the first step. For this tutorial, we suggest using a 2 inch thick foam. This 2 inch foam provides great comfort, but it also requires that a boxing be sewn to the top circle plate. Sounds complicated, but not after watching this video. A bar stool typically doesn't get used that often, so you can get a cushion right standard foam, which is a medium density foam, in a 2 inch thickness, uh, and it'll probably be sufficient. If you plan to use your bar stool often, you may want to get the Cushion Right Premium, which is a high density foam. I recommend a medium IFD. This is a two inch foam. It's 24 inches by 80 is the sheet size, so you can get five bar stools done with one sheet. As you can see, when I marked around the perimeter of the bar stool, I held my pen perfectly vertical to the edge, which made the line approximately a quarter inch bigger than the top of the bar stool. So our foam is slightly oversized. That's perfect. You can cut foam with the Sayrite foam saw here. It cuts nicely and you have a base that it runs on on the table. Or you can use just an electric kitchen knife that you can buy from a department store. So first we'll demonstrate the Sayrite blade foam saw. Easy. Don't want to spend the money for the Sayrite blade foam saw? Well you can use this, you just have to hold it perfectly vertical as you cut. So you may want to get a second helper, but it does work. And that edge is not that bad. Now if you have any inconsistencies, ours is pretty nice, but there's a little one here. You can use the Sayrite uh, foam shaper and actually sand away that to make it perfectly smooth. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that is an option that you can always choose. In this chapter, we're going to pattern our vinyl fabric and we'll use the foam to do that. This is Eversoft uh, vinyl fabric. Uh, almost like faux leather. This one is textured and this one is called Eversoft Smooth. Both of them have a tricot backing and it's a four-way stretch. So it'll stretch along the weft and the warp and also the bias. So it's excellent for applications like this. You can choose whether you want the textured one or the smooth one and it's available at Sailrite. We've flipped the uh, vinyl to the underside and we'll put our uh, foam close to the edge and we trace around it with our uh, scryball pencil just a little bit outside the edge of the foam by about a quarter inch. So I'm just holding it uh, perfectly vertical. And we need one circle for the top and one circle for the flange. But the circle for the flange, which will be right next to it here, we're going to make it a little bit bigger. So this is on the underside of the cushion. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my pencil out at about a 45 degree angle and a trace around it that way. Now there are other ways that you can trace the, the uh, flange out so that it's slightly bigger, but this is a, a pretty good way to do it. To determine the banding or the boxing, put the foam on top of your uh, stool and measure it without compression. And you can see I get three inches. I want to add three quarter inches for seam allowance. We're going to be using a half inch up here and a quarter inch down here to sew the flange on, which will compress our foam nicely. The diameter of our circle is about 13 and a half inches, 13.5 times 
3.14 equals 42. I'll make my uh, length at least 45 inches, a couple inches extra. I'm making my banding or boxing, and I love using the clear acrylic ruler because I can see the line through the ruler. That way I know exactly where to mark for the three and three quarter inch width. This is the top, this is the flange. I have another top here and a flange here, and I have two boxing strips. So I can get two up with, out of one yard. Now I could possibly get one here and another one here, but then I don't really have enough banding unless I would want to to make the bandings out of this direction and sew them together. So that's your choice. Really, you can only get two stools done doing this method out of one yard of fabric. Eversoft vinyl cuts beautifully with scissors. Uh, there's no unraveling that happens, so cut away. We're going to take the larger of the circles and we're going to cut out the middle. So I'm going to use uh, my Sarat canvas patterning ruler and I'm going to mark around the perimeter, holding it uh, perpendicular to the edge. Uh, and this doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. It's going to be our stapling flange, but having it be round will remove the wrinkles. I'm going to fold the fabric so I can cut a notch in the center, and we will uh, cut on our line, creating a uh, band that's circular in shape. So we have our flange. We have our boxing, outside surfaces will face each other. Let's take it to the machine and sew this together. In this chapter, we're going to sew that boxing to the top of our circle, and we're going to use a semi-flat filled seam. Okay, so our banding is facing up, and we're going to take our top piece and face it down. First thing we're going to do is we're going to reduce the stitch length. Right now it's six millimeters. I like to make it about four with our first uh, stitch. Uh, that way I don't see as many holes. And we need to be accurate. So I'm going to turn down the Worker Bee Power Pack system to about half speed. Then I'm going to put the magnetic guide on. We want to start sewing about three inches from the end to leave that unsewn so we can join it together in, uh, after we get worked around all the way around. So we're going to start sewing here. There's no reason to do any reversing. We're going to sew over our first stitches. Keep the boxing going in straight and then just Turn this as you sew. And you want to be accurate about this. So I can sew a little bit faster because it's really pretty easy. All I'm doing is moving the circle over to make sure that it's directly uh, in line with the magnetic guide when it reaches the needle. Pretty easy job. Okay, we're coming to where we began and we want to stop sewing at approximately, you know, three to four inches from where we need to join the banding together, so right about here. And I'm going to pull this actually out from our sewing machine. Okay, we need to join these before we sew them to the top plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk this around as though it were sewing. Da -da 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 -da. Right there is where it would end up. And then I'm going to walk this around to where it was sewing. And what I want is I want a half inch over each other. So this is approximately a half inch. So I'm going to clip this fabric. That'll give me a half inch of overlap with both pieces. And then I'll take this and I want to cut a perpendicular from the edge. Now you can use a ruler if you'd like. I'm just going to kind of guess at this. That looks like a perpendicular cut. Then I uh, put both uh, surfaces facing each other like that. And I sew a half inch from the edge. And I will want to do a little bit of reversing here at the beginning, but I don't want to go into where I'm going to see the, the reversing if I accidentally sew too deep into where I'm going to be sewing it on. And I'll go all the way to the end and do a teeny bit of reversing there. Okay, so now we have the banding sewn together, and if you've done it right, it should be the same uh, distance as the plate. So I'm going to open this up and splay it out like a little butterfly. I'm going to put this back in. Oops, I need to make sure I pull out more thread. I'm going to put this back in, and I'm going to sew directly over top of my previous stitches. Now that's important because if you don't, you're going to see the stitches, which is a little bit unsightly. 
So sew over those by about an inch and I'm gonna do just one stitch in reverse. Because sometimes if you, if you do more then you can sometimes see it. And I wanna match up this edge as I sew along. Okay, and then I'm gonna splay this out so that it doesn't take up much room. And then we want to run into those stitches that we started with by about an inch. And I'm going to do one stitch in reverse, one, and then forward one. And there we are. Nice. I'm going to put this all the way back up into six millimeter uh, stitch length. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I'm going to move the magnet because we don't need that for the top stitch. And I'm going to turn this right side out. I'm going to put it underneath the uh, sewing machine and I'm going to make sure my seam allowance, which is right here, is tucked into the banding, not into the top. We don't want that into the top. And I like to sew where I've joined the pieces together um, so I can kind of have my reversing be there or my top stitches be there when I uh, come around. So I'm going to lower this and I'm just going to use the uh, left side of the center foot as my guide here. My seam allowance is laying this direction, which is what I want, so I'm sewing through the seam allowance. And I'm not going to do any reversing when I start here. Now you want to be accurate here. So if you want to turn down your machine to the slowest speed with the Worker Bee Power Pack system, you can. Um, and every time you make an adjustment, you want the needle to be buried so that you uh, don't lose your spot that you stopped in. Pull the fabric apart left and right so we're kind of on that first stitch and uh, don't make sudden turns. Uh, be smooth about this and your top stitch will always look good. So we're gonna go all the way around to where we began, making sure the seam allowance is on the right side and then we'll show you what's next. We are coming to where we began our sewing and we want to run right into those top stitches. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the trailing thread flush. Now if you want to be picky, you can make sure that you're sewing into the same holes. I'm only going to do um, one stitch in reverse and one stitch in forward twice, and that locks our stitch in place. The staple flange is what eliminates the wrinkles. We'll be sewing that to the assembly next. So here's our piece turned right side out. And what we're going to do with this flange is we're going to sew it. This is the confusing part. Well, let's see if I can explain it well. So here, here it is. We want to sew this to this. Outside surfaces facing each other. So basically the outside edge get sewn all along here, okay? And I don't expect this to be the same size when we're sewing. We're gonna probably cut it and make a difference up, but this is the next step, and we'll start here where our seam is. I'm gonna take my magnetic guide, and I'm gonna put it so that it's right up against the presser foot, almost, almost touching, which is a quarter inch uh, from my needle. And then I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna place it down so outside surfaces are facing each other. We're going to splay this open like a butterfly and we're basically going to sew a quarter inch stitch all around the perimeter. So lower my foot, no reversing is necessary. We're going to sew over those previous stitches and we just, just want to match up the edges as we go here. Now uh, accuracy is not as important for this, but you still want to be fairly accurate because this is going to be where the stitch lands on the uh, frame of the chair, the underside of the chair. Now, I don't want to pull too much on this material because you can actually stretch it. I want to just basically let it rest without being stretched. And I am sewing a six millimeter straight stitch. You don't have to sew a smaller stitch length on this because this stitch is not going to be visible. As we sew this zipper flange on and come to where we began sewing, you'll see we have excess, which we discussed we'd have, and that's not a big deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tuck the excess in here and stop sewing right where I began sewing um, because this I don't want this to overlap each other. So watch what I do. So I'm going to come over here. We're going to pull this so that it's tucked out of the way. I'm going to flatten this. OK, 
Okay, now I'm on top of my previous stitches and I'm just gonna go in reverse a little bit and we'll take this out. And because this is on the back side of our job, we can just cut the excess away. Let's just make sure that we do it without cutting any of our actual piece. So let's see, I'm gonna cut this so that it's kind of flush up against each other. But I just don't necessarily want any of it laying on top of a, another piece. So there we go. So they're almost flush. Don't worry about the V or anything like that. And again, that's on the back side. Now that the band is sewing on, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna do a top stitch. Now, why are we doing a top stitch? Well, that's just to keep this flange uh, going in the right direction. I don't want the flange to go down into my boxing here. I'm gonna have it go back against the uh, staple flange this direction. So all I'm gonna do is put this in here. This is a top stitch that nobody's gonna really see. So we're gonna get that out of the way and we'll just start right here at the end. So to sew this top stitch, just pull left or right and make sure that your seam allowance is to the right. And we will sew all the way around this and that'll keep that flange on our backer board. Um, so this is a pretty easy process here. This is the top stitch that will not be visible. This is the one that's visible. Let's get our stool and put it inside. To help hide the edge of the wood, we're gonna apply some foam to it. This is an optional step. Now, it can be stapled on like this, uh, but there is a chance that you would see the foam versus the wood of the chair. So uh, you have the option of just stapling on like this, but what we're gonna do to make it even a better application is we're gonna put foam on the side of this wood. And I believe that'll make it uh, look good for a longer period of time. This actually looks pretty good right now, but you may in time uh, with use see the wood and I don't want that to happen. So we're gonna put foam there. Okay, to do this, what I'm going to do is, I know that we have about a quarter inch of foam that goes past the wooden frame, so I'm going to cut a quarter inch piece out of two inch foam, okay? This, this is actually possible. I'll show you how it's done. So this is our two inch foam, and we can actually make a quarter inch strip. So I'm going to use my clear acrylic ruler and put it on the quarter inch and use a marker and strike a line that I can follow. Now we need to do this for the length of our uh, uh, radius, which is 45 inches. That'll be more than enough and we can trim it when we get it to the chair. So we're gonna do this to 45 inches in length. So now we can take our saw, or you could even use that uh, electric kitchen knife that you buy for cutting a turkey. And I'm gonna try to keep my hand out of the shot. So as you can see, this is actually almost, it's probably not perfectly a quarter inch, but it actually works pretty well uh, to create a quarter inch band for around the chair. So we're gonna do that all the way to the 45 inches and we'll show you how to cut it uh, in height as well. So the height from our uh, foam to the bottom of the chair is about one inch. So I'll just cut it to one inch. Um, I, there are multiple ways you can do this. You can use scissors to do this. I'm just gonna use a utility knife on a cutting pad and the clear acrylic ruler. So I'm gonna make sure this is on one inch. But, uh, so I have he um, headliner adhesive and I'm going to uh, glue the foam to the bottom of the chair. Why do I do that? Uh, mainly just so it doesn't move around when people sit on it. And uh, the, so again, is it something that has to be done? Probably not, but it's probably the best thing to do. So I'm gonna glue, uh, apply glue to the foam on this side and then uh, apply glue to the bottom of the chair. Notice that I've taped on a skirt out of paper so I don't get any glue anywhere. Now we have to have this glue tack up a little bit before we can bond the two. So the glue is now tacky, it doesn't transfer to my finger, and I'm gonna put it on so that it's centered, and we'll show you what's next. And, and I'm gonna put the glue on the strip of foam all the way down its length, and I'm also gonna put it on the edge of the chair all around its 
perimeter. Okay, now that it's tacky, all we do, and you can see that we can actually uh, peel it up if we get it in the wrong spot, <clears throat> but we just go around the chair like this, and don't worry if it's a little bit proud, the fabric will help to push that down. You could shave it if it were really proud with the, uh, the foam shaper. We have a little bit of extra, so we'll just cut it with scissors. If it's too much, trim off a little bit more. Stapling the vinyl fabric to the back side of the bar stool is next. Okay, let's put it inside, and it will fit tightly. So I'm going to probably uh, come back after I get it fitted around here. Uh, don't expect this to be easy. You're going to be fighting, fighting it a little bit. It has to be positioned a little bit in the right way, otherwise it won't go on at all. So see how we're way too far this way? So I'll come back after we get it on here. Once you get it on, you're going to need to work this seam so that it's around the top edge. This is ex extremely expected, so don't... It, it's ex not expected, it's required, is what mm -hmm. I should say. So, pull it on, make sure it's in the right spot, because once you start doing the stapling, it's not going to move on you. So there it's a little bit too far over. You've got to make it perfect on the top and perfectly around the perimeter. We'll do that and we'll come back to it. So I've got the top right where I like it. It looks good all the way around uh, and it's nice and flat. So we're gonna concentrate on the bottom side now and get ready for stapling. Okay, so if you've done this right, this should fall right on the edge, which it looks like it is. I'm gonna use the Serrate upholstery staple gun and I'm gonna put a staple right there. And then I'm gonna go uh, completely to the other side because I wanna make sure that everything is positioned exactly where I want it. I'm gonna pull this up and put a staple here. So basically, uh, all the four sides of our compass, I want to get it in position, and then I want to inspect it, because I can pull these staples if I don't like it. Okay, so once those are in position, inspect everything, make sure you're happy with it, and then continue to staple. So now, since I have it in four, Northeast, and west, and south. I'm going to go uh, between those and tension it there. This is just a precautionary step so that you get it exactly where you want it. Between there, pull it taut. Between here, and we'll just keep doing that. Don't pull so much that it causes a hard spot either. You want it to be pleasing. We're using the Sayrite Short Nose Upholstery Staple Gun, and this staple gun takes staples that are a half-inch crown, and Sayrite has designed it so it doesn't easily punch through vinyl fabrics like other upholstery staple guns do. It's available in a short nose or a long nose version. So I like to take a razor knife that's sharp and just go close to the staples by about a quarter inch. Because we have a, a staple flange like this, there are very few wrinkles at all that you have to contend with. So this is a really nice way to do a bar stool. That's a little bit more complicated, but you don't have to work out all the wrinkles when you staple it on. You basically just staple it on and go from there. Our two inch foam cushion for our bar stool is now complete. Coming up is the materials and tools list that we use to make this bar stool cushion. If you have any questions about the fabric or supplies or tools, be sure to give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.